Episode 15, A Joe Christening, originally posted October 11, 2012. The year was 1987, and at this point, my friends and I were hardcore G.I. Joe collectors. But there was one thing in this line that continued to bug me. As I mentioned in a previous post, one cool thing about this line was that each character that they released came with a rather detailed and personalized file card that gave us a good background and feel for each character. So each Joe had a combat designation, like Ranger, Hello Jumper, or Counterintelligence, a code name, like Stalker, Ripcord, and Scarlet, and finally a real civilian name like Lonzo Wilkinson, Wallace Weems, or Shayna O'Hara. So, why should this bother me? Simply put, after 5 years and over 40 unique Joe characters released, not a single one of them was named Chris. My three closest friends all had Joes that shared names with them. There was David, Gabe, and Javier, who at the very least shared the same last name with the G.I. Joe sailor shipwreck, Delgado, but no Chris. And my friends, being the nice people that they were, would always rub it in and never make me forget that I had no Joe to call my own. Anyway, that all changed in 1987, when Hasbro came up with the military police character codenamed Law and his dog, Order. Get it? Police? Law and Order? Pretty witty, Hasbro. I remember it fondly like it was yesterday. Javier called me up on the phone, excitedly telling me the good news that there was finally a Joe named Chris. I wasted no time and went to the number one toy store in my area back then, Novo Fontana, and found him hanging behind the counter. Upon confirming that he was indeed named Chris, I eagerly forked over my money, and he was all mine. I really didn't care that he sported a rather tacky uniform. I thought that his white empty helmet, bright red shirt, bright blue vest, and olive pants were fantastic. A genius color combination choice if I do say so myself, and a far cry from the plain green uniforms that the original Joes had. But then again, by this time, almost all the newer Joes were sporting snazzy bright colors. The best part, however, was that my guy had something that my friend's Joes didn't have. A dog. Eat that barbecue bazooka and shipwreck. So there he was. Military police, law. Real name, Christopher Levine, who I later found out when he made his animated debut in the G.I. Joe movie, sounded sort of like Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong fame. Now how cool is that? Another interesting bit of law trivia was that his action figure's face was actually based on a real person. Kirk Bozigian. He may not sound familiar, but he was actually one of the most influential contributors to the real American hero line way back in 1982 all the way up to 1994, the last year those toys were on the shelves. Anyway, years later, when the new 25th anniversary line started, a properly updated Law & Order was unfortunately left out. They did a new barbecue, bazooka, and shipwreck, but no law. I just really couldn't catch a break. There was a glimmer of hope in 2009 when he was announced to be part of a movie-themed five-pack. Unfortunately, this turned out to be a lazy attempt on the part of Hasbro, as the five-pack consisted of a bunch of similarly uniformed Joes sporting the same generic desert camo. The only real indicator that this guy was supposed to be Law was that he came with a dog. This was definitely not gonna cut it for me, so I decided to take things into my own hands and make my own updated version of Law. This was my very first attempt at a custom-made G.I. Joe figure, and I thought I did a fairly decent job if I do say so myself. But ultimately, it was still lacking. Fortunately though, I didn't have to wait long before Hasbro finally gave me what I was waiting for. An official, modern take on Law & Order as part of the 30th Anniversary Renegades toy line. And while this wasn't exactly the classic Law & Order, what we did get was arguably a better version. Gone was a tacky colored uniform, replaced with a more realistically dark blue ensemble. And like most of the other figures released at this time, he was given a whole slew of accessories. Removable vest, knee pads and helmet with face shield, as well as a number of weapons, a couple pistols, with one even featuring a detachable suppressor, a shotgun, and assault rifle. And if that wasn't enough, he also had a tonfa and handcuffs to boot. And even his trusty partner order came with a protective vest. This was all any fan of Law & Order could really ask for in a modern update, and if this was the last version we would ever have gotten, I would have been more than content. But as it turns out, it wouldn't be the last. So what other version could top this one? Well, I got my answer in 2016. By this time, Hasbro had stopped making G.I. Joes for retail. 
but thanks to the G.I. Joe Collectors Club, the Joe line wasn't completely dead. For those willing to spend a little more and make an annual monetary commitment, the club offered a figure subscription service where they released new Joes every year to help fill in any gaps left by Hasbro in our collections. Gaps like a classic red and blue deco of Law & Order. Yup, thanks to the Collectors Club, I finally got what I was waiting for for almost 30 years. Anyway, to close, a few years back, I learned that sometime in the 90s, after I was done collecting Joes for the time being, Hasbro actually released another Joe named Chris. And as hard as it was to believe, he managed to sport an even tackier uniform. And they also ended up killing him off in the G.I. Joe comics years later. Rest in peace, Christopher Groen, a.k.a. Tracker. We hardly knew thee. So that's that. I'll stick to Law & Order as the only true Chris in the Joe ranks. Yo, Chris. So, does anyone else here share a name with any members of G.I. Joe? Did it actually even matter to anyone? And in case anyone missed it, my name is Chris. Thanks for checking out Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. For more stories, please like and subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell for updates or visit my website at storiesfromthetoyshelf.com and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next one.